Hey guys, so today I have swatches of the Hello Kitty 2018 Holiday Collection from OPI. There are 15 polishes here all together. And these are starting to pop up places like Ulta and Sally's right now. So before I get into the swatches, I have to ask you guys some. So this came in the PR box for this collection from OPI. And it's a little dirty because it was like stuck to the lid of the box that had a bunch of stuff printed on it. So it got like glued to the ink. But I don't know what this is. <laughs> and I have consulted several people and I can't figure it out. And the only thing I can think of is to go to YouTube. I thought this was a makeup bag. It's not a makeup bag. It like, how to show this. It velcros open here and then it opens into this. There's weird elastic straps. This is completely open. I, if anybody has any idea what this is, please help me because it is like really bothering me that I don't know what this is and I need help. So if you know, please tell me. So 15 polishes all together and I will get into the swatches. So before I get into the swatches, I want to talk about the bottles just a little bit. They have this little plastic wrap around the cap. Just OPI does this a lot with like special edition collections just to make them look a little bit different than the regular OPI polish. I've had several of these wrapped bottles in the past and I've never had such a huge problem with the wrap not being tight enough on the caps when you try to take the cap off the wrap spins and you have to like really give it some pressure to get the cap off i mean i've had that occasionally like maybe one out of a collection but a lot of the polishes in this collection seem to be doing that i don't know if it's just my set but uh that is it's almost annoying enough for me to take the wraps off the cap which is like totally against everything i believe in the first polish is Let's Be Friends. This is a re-release of a polish from the original Hello Kitty collection. I have that one here, and they actually look pretty similar on camera. I'm only, I'm looking in like a really low quality viewfinder, but it looks like you can kind of tell that there's a little bit of a color difference, but let me show you the swatches. So hopefully you can tell I'm having issues with an old camera, a new colored background, some weird glitchy things. I'm going to be retiring this camera soon, but I have to find a tripod that can support the weight of my new one. This is the older Let's Be Friends here and the new version here. You can see that the new version is a lot cooler, a little bit chalkier in appearance, if that makes sense. Where the older one is a little bit warmer, a little bit more yellow, they're really not that close at all. The camera is showing them a little bit closer than I think they are in person. Okay, so here is one coat. This is not really sheer, but a little bit streaky. It is a really light color, so that's not super surprising. I did not have an easy time with this when I was doing my swatch photos. I still had some pretty significant streaks after three coats, so we'll see what happens here today. Um, I don't have high hopes for this one. The formula does feel pretty good, though. It's not too thick or too thin. Okay, so here is the second coat. That first coat dried a lot more sheer than it applied, so we're going to let the second one dry completely, too. But I can already see some streaks in there. I will say it does look like... It's looking a little bit better already than it did when I did my photos. So I must be doing a little bit better job painting my nails today. So again, this dried a bit more sheer than it was when it was first applied. So I have some more streaks to cover up. I'm going to let this third coat dry completely so I can see if there are still some streaks left over like there were when I did my pictures. It looks to me like there's going to be because I can already see a few faint ones in there and I know the polish is going to dry more sheer. Okay, so that is fully dry-ish, like two or three minutes. So I can still see some streaks. They're not the worst ever. I really have to look for them, but they are still there after three coats. So I really, really like this color. I just don't love how it performed. So that is three coats of Let's Be Friends. So the next polish is called Born to Sparkle, and this is a glitter topper. It's a lighter pink metallic glitter in a couple of different sizes. And I'm layering this over Let's Be Friends in the swatch photo. It's over the old version of Let's Be Friends because I forgot to put it on when I still had the new version on my nails. So this is in a clear base. Pretty decent amount of glitter in there. Almost too much for me. It's almost a little too dense for me but that's more of a personal preference thing. 
once you get the hang of it, you can kind of pay attention to how much glitter you're getting on your brush before you pull it out of the bottle and I guess adjust your coverage that way. And this is going to dry textured because it is a fairly chunky glitter, so you're going to want top coat to smooth that out, and those larger glitters especially are going to stick to the nail when you remove it. And you can kind of see the difference in the density from my pointer finger down to my pinky as I got more used to the polish and kind of adjusted how much glitter I was working with. So that is one coat of Born to Sparkle. The next polish is called Let's Celebrate, and this is a shimmery pink base with really tiny pink glitters and really almost as tiny iridescent glitters. Now I'm showing this over Let's Be Friends. I do have a picture of this on its own in three coats as well. And I was originally going to swatch this on its own, but it is pretty sheer. So I definitely think it's better suited as a topper. One thing that I noticed with those iridescent glitters is once this is over a lighter base, and it doesn't look like it's really picking up on camera, you can see those iridescent glitters almost look like they have a little rainbow to them. Like once they have that base underneath, you can see that some of them are primarily yellow, and some of them are blue, and some of them are green, and I think they stand out a lot better. So this does give a just slight pink tint to the base. Well, more pink than what the base color has on its own, but it is pretty subtle. You will get a little bit of texture out of this because those are small glitters, but it's not going to be bad because they are all very, very fine, and you might have a little bit of resistance on removal as well, but again, not as bad as something chunkier like the last glitter topper. So that is one coat of Let's Celebrate. The next polish is called Pile on the Sprinkles, and this is the purple version of Let's Celebrate. This has a shimmery purple base, slightly tinted, with really, really fine purple metallic glitters, and then some iridescent glitter in there as well. And again, I am layering this over Let's Be Friends. This is only two coats, because I'm getting sick of putting this polish on. So again, this is a lot more sheer than I thought it would be just by looking at it in the bottle. I thought it would be a more full coverage, shimmery base, build it up in three coats polish. I do have pictures of it in three coats. You can see that the base is slightly blue tinted and it does change that pink underneath, that really light pink base color. Good formula on this one. And it has those same iridescent glitters that once they go over a lighter base, you can see that some of them are green, some of them are yellow, etc. And same rules apply to this one as the last one. A very, very slight texture when it dries because while the glitters are small, they are glitter and a little bit of resistance on removal. So that is one coat of Pile on the Sprinkles. The next polish is called A Hush of Blush, and this is a lighter, pale pink, kind of a little bit frosty looking shimmery polish. So this one is sheer on that first coat, and there are brush strokes through that shimmer when it's wet. This is a very cool pink. It almost leans a little bit purple, but that might just be me. And you can tell on my pointer finger there, it is settling a little bit down to the side. I think I had a little bit too much polish on that nail. So this one is still a bit sheer on that second coat. Those brush strokes did settle a little bit, but not completely. I also feel like it dried a bit more sheer than it applied, but honestly, my memory isn't great, so I might have forgotten exactly what it looked like in one coat wet in the last two minutes. So, this one just had a couple of streaks on that second coat. Really not bad. I think I'm being kind of picky by doing the third here. It does change the color just a little bit. I think it makes it slightly more of that pastel pink shade once it's a little bit more opaque. And while there are still some very minor brush strokes there, once it's fully dry, they are very minor. I almost feel a little guilty calling this frosty, because when I call something frosty, it's kind of an insult, because I hate that finish so much. But this is not as frosty on the nails as I was anticipating by looking at the bottle. So that is three coats of a hush of blush. The next polish is called Many Celebrations to Go, and this is a slightly pale gold metallic. So this one is pretty sheer on that first coat, but it does have a lot of sparkle to it. It actually looks much less sheer in the viewfinder than it does from where I'm looking at it in person. Good formula on this one as well. So this one does start to build up on that second coat. I can still see my nail line though. Again, not in the viewfinder. 
There really aren't brush strokes through this when it's wet because the sparkly shimmery particles are a little bit bigger. So this one does cover completely in three coats. And I mentioned that those shimmer particles were big. They're not so big that they're going to be textured at all. They will dry completely smooth. And once it's built up in three coats, you can see a few brush strokes through those little shimmer particles, but those will go away completely once it's dry. So that is three coats of many celebrations to go. The next polish is called Let Love Sparkle, and this is an icy blue kind of shimmery polish, and then there are some really fine, what look like iridescent glitters and little blue sparks in there as well. So this one is pretty sheer on that first coat. It is in a fairly frosty base. You can see there are a good number of brush strokes in there. It's harder to tell on the first coat, but this does give you a very slight glitter under a frosty base effect, which has not been my favorite thing that OPI has done in the past. This is probably the most minor of all the polishes I've seen them do it with because the glitter is so small. And some of that glitter does come to the surface, and it does stand out and kind of reflect that blue and iridescent, but some of it also gets stuck under that frosty base and looks a bit lumpy. So most of those brush strokes did level out as it dried. They'll stand out a little bit better once the polish gets more opaque here with multiple coats. It did seem to dry a little bit more sheer than it applied, and I also feel like that lumpiness is standing out a lot more after that second coat. So I am adding a third coat here. I planned on doing this thinking that it would dry a little bit more sheer than it actually did. So this isn't entirely necessary, but there are still some gaps in the coverage that I want to cover up. But that second coat was more opaque than I anticipated after it was dry. Okay, my battery died and I don't know exactly where it cut me off, but I was saying you will definitely want top coat for this. Those glitters that are in there are really small, they're fine, but they do give a little bit of a textured look. However, I think even with top coat, you're still going to have that textured look because of the glitters that are stuck under that frosty base. They just make it look a little bit gritty. Top coat will smooth it out, but it's not going to change the look that much. So that is three coats of a Let Love Sparkle. The next polish is called Isn't She Iconic, and this is a metallic charcoal kind of gray silver. So this one is a little bit sheer on that first coat, but not terrible, and also very sparkly. Oh, it looks way more opaque in the viewfinder. I need to start looking at that first. And just like the gold polish, the sparkle particles in here are pretty big, so the brush strokes aren't bad, and they do settle very well. And good formula on this one as well. So this one does start to build up on that second coat. I'm going to take a close look at it because what I'm seeing in the viewfinder and what I'm seeing in person are not quite the same right now. I think I might need a third for some bald spots, but it's going to be really close. And those brush strokes did smooth out as it dried. So I did need a third coat with this one. There were a few uneven spots that I wanted to cover up. I think that's going to come down to application, though. I can easily see someone only needing two. So that is three coats of Isn't She Iconic. So the next polish is called Hello Pretty, and this is, I almost called it a Barney the Dinosaur purple cream, and then I googled Barney, and he's like way more pink than I remember. So this is a little more Grimace purple and a little less Barney purple. So this one is actually very jelly-like on that first coat. I was surprised about that when I first started swatching this. So this will take a couple of coats to build up, and good formula on this one as well. So this one actually builds up pretty well on the second coat for being a jelly finish. It looks pretty good in two, but I'm going to let it dry all the way before I call it. There's a weird little spot on the end of this nail, and I can't tell if it's a reflection or not. And you can see that that color changes quite a bit with that second coat. I'm very, very torn with this one. It is so close to being completely opaque in two coats. If I look very closely, there are just a few spots where it's a little bit light, it's not completely opaque, but they're so, so minor. I'm going to call this good in two coats, but just know that it is like right on the edge of needing three. So that is two coats of Hello Pretty. The next polish is called Glitter to My Heart, and this is a glitter topper. It's in a clear base. It has really fine silver metallic glitters and then matte white glitters in a couple of different sizes. I could have sworn that I've seen this exact polish from OPI before, but when I was going through my stash, I couldn't actually find anything exactly the same. I have Pirouette My Whistle here, which is 
pretty different. Even the glitters that are in there aren't white. They're more of a cloudy, like semi-transparent kind of glitter. I'm still not sure if this is the polish I was thinking of, but it's the only one that I can find that's even remotely close, so it might have been. I just swear I've seen this before, but I couldn't find it in my own stash. And since we're here, we're layering this over Hello Pretty. So where I complained about the last glitter topper almost being a little too dense and I felt like I needed to thin it out to get the coverage that I wanted, not with thinner, but just like knock a bit of the polish off the brush, this one is almost not quite dense enough for me. It's not bad, I could definitely work with it, I just wish it was slightly more dense. I'd rather have to take some polish off the brush to get the coverage I want than have to put a lot of polish on the nail to get the amount of glitter that I want. But that's also me being very picky. So that is one coat of glitter to my heart. The next polish is called All About the Bows, and this is a medium red that leans a little bit pink. So this one covers very well, very evenly on that first coat, but I can still see my nail line through there. This is really, really smooth, very easy to control. And usually right after I say that, I hit the side of my finger or my cuticle or something. So this one does look like it's changing the color a bit. The color's getting a little bit deeper on that second coat. I can still see some nail line through there, but it's not really bad. Not sure if it's worth a third coat. I'm gonna let it dry completely before I decide. And this does dry very shiny. Okay, this is actually looking pretty good after two coats. If I look really, really closely, I can see a little bit of nail line, but I don't think it's bad enough to do a third. And of course I get less picky the longer I'm sitting here and filming the same video. So that might also have something to do with it. That is two coats of All About the Bows. The next polish is called A Kiss on the Chic, and this is a darker red cream. And this is another one that covers really evenly, but does have some nail line showing. Really good, really smooth formula, just like the last one. So this one does cover pretty well on that second coat. It does deepen the color. I can still see a little bit of nail line. So I'll let the second coat dry completely and see if it's looking similar to how the last polish looked after two coats. And this one also dries very shiny. So I let this one dry completely and it actually looks better in two coats than the last polish did in two coats. So I'm going to call it good. That is two coats of A Kiss on the Chic. So the next polish is called Glitter All The Way and this is a really bright yellowy gold shimmery base with gold micro glitters in it. I'm going to wear this over A Kiss On The Chic. I'm going to show it as a topper but I do have photos of it in three coats on its own as well and it did build up pretty well in three. So the shimmery base that's in this one is much more opaque than the lighter purple and pink versions of this polish. This one is a little bit different but it's similar. I really liked how this looked over the red though. And this is going to dry textured because there is a decent amount of glitter in there. So you'll want top coat to smooth it out and that glitter is going to stick to the nail when you try to remove it. So that is one coat of glitter all the way. So the next polish is called My Favorite Gal Pal and this is a darker navy blue but definitely not so dark that it looks black. So this is another jelly just like the purple which again surprised me when I was doing my swatch photos because I wasn't expecting it to be a jelly. It's a little bit uneven, so it is going to take a couple of coats to even everything out, but pretty good formula on this one. So this one does build up really well on that second coat. It's another one that I'm just going to let dry completely before I make a final decision. It is looking pretty good here though. Maybe not. Maybe I have some spots. We'll see. And this is a jelly finish, which usually means, and it does in this case, that it dries shiny. I know I've let a few polishes slide with two coats in this video, but this one I'm going to add the third. It's very close to being opaque, I just have some spots that are a little bit too light for me. But that third coat doesn't seem to change the color much, it just covers up those spots. So that is three coats of my favorite Gal Pal. And the last polish is called Dream in Glitter, and this is a clear base with a couple of different sizes of relatively fine red micro glitter, metallic micro glitter. And I am layering this over my favorite Gal Pal. So this is a decently dense, clear-based glitter topper. Since the glitters in here are all relatively small, it does take a little bit of manipulation to get even coverage without having any large gaps or spots where it just looks like you swiped too much glitter away from that area. 
And this will also dry texture because it is glitter and it will be difficult to remove because it is glitter. So that is one coat of Dream In Glitter. So I wasn't like overly impressed with any of these. I was really excited about this collection, but I just, nothing speaking to me. I do really like glitter all the way. It was nicely full coverage for this kind of gold and also a really bright yellow gold, which I appreciate. So I think that one's going to be my favorite. So that is the OPI Hello Kitty collection for holiday 2019. So again, those are popping up right now, Ulta, Sally's, etc. So hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will talk to you later. Bye.